Hello everybody. So, as a software developer with children, I also want my children to know the joys of staring at a screen and screaming for three hours straight while you try to find a bug. Or other joys that come from programming. <laughs> now, I have bought many tools and toys and things that I could use to help train my children into working with programming. Um, Various things like the Robot Turtles, which was kickstarted a while ago, or playing, doing something very similar with Lego, and some computer games like Box Island and Code Combat and various others. But I think I found one that really wins when it comes to just teaching children how a computer works, and that is the Turing Tumble. Not sponsored, um, just a geek who has found something who really loves it. And here is basically what it looks like. Here's a board. We've got a number of switchy things we can put on. And the, the various things, the green things kind of act like wires allowing you to pass the balls into different places. And then we have some bits which can store a one or a zero. And apart from that, the only other thing we have is a bit that can talk to another bit so with a a gear in place we can put another bit on like so and so changing one bit changing one bit changes its friend and that means you can use the one to store things about the other and this allows you to kind of copy some memory across I have been very impressed with this since it's come. The boys absolutely love it. Um, they always want to have another chance to do another puzzle from the book. <laughs> and there's some fantastic puzzles in there. They start a bit simple and they feel a bit repetitive at the beginning. Um, but I can see why they do that for the kids, just to build up some confidence. And by the end, my goodness, these puzzles get hard. Um, the, uh, the last puzzle in the book... Uh, it gives you two two-bit registers and basically you need to be able to answer less than, greater than, or equal. And depending on the result, put a ball in either L, G, in, in one of these three buckets. And I'm looking at this and trying to work out how on earth I'm going to get there. But clearly it can be done and as I keep going, I will get there. So here's a video of the boys having a go. Our challenge is just... We 
we just save one. Okay, let's run it. Now, I have to say, I was really impressed with how they really got to grips with it. And yeah, okay, they still make mistakes. Of course they do. Everyone programming makes plenty of mistakes. But I really enjoy watching them work through the puzzles and see things and, and work out what they can do with that. I had a, a really interesting time trying to explain to them the idea that they had to make their code work with every situation. So we, we actually had a puzzle a bit after that one where they had to make it... Oh, that's upside down. No. That's upside down. They had to they had to make it work. So they had a bit here, and basically the puzzle was: if it's this way at the start, you should get a red one in one of the um, in one of these bucket pieces. So this this ends the program, right? So they had to get a red one in the bucket if that was facing that way, or a blue one if it was facing that way. And so basically they hard coded the right result. So the first time they did it, so it would go, and the blue one would go straight in. And then they took all the pieces off and then they put all the pieces on so that they could get a red one in the bucket. And, and it took quite a long time for me to tell them it needs to be the same program. The only thing that changes is this one bit. I think once they got the hang of that, a lot more of this has really come together. So I'm going to show you one of the puzzles now and how it runs. So the intended output for this program is to see four blues followed by one red and then four more blues, and then to finish by dropping a red one in there and stopping from triggering any more balls. In order to get the number four, I've set these bits up here, both pointing to the left. This kind of represents a one, and this represents twos, so one plus two is three, but we're gonna count the zero as well. So we'll run it. So now this is pointing to the right, that's taken one off that number, taken another one off, So the last ball is dropping and you see it's triggered a red on the right hand side. And the red skipped through the crossover there so that it could trigger a blue instead of triggering another red. And that's complete. As you see, we have four blues at the bottom, one red, and then another four blues. And we've ended the program with a red up here in the intercept bucket. With this bit here, it was clearly gonna let exactly one red past, and then the second one would fall into that bucket. And that's basically the principles on which this works. So, there you are, the touring tumble. Um, Absolutely, totally worth the 65 quid it cost me. I don't know if you can still get it for 65 quid, but if you can, just do it. Even if you don't have kids, it's great fun. Like, I have spent hours on this thing just working my way through the puzzles, and yeah, I'm going to keep doing that. My name's Matt Studley from storyfeet.com, and you have just watched a video.